I am that I am, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, your children have gathered before thee, my Lord and my Father. Father, to thank you, to appreciate you, to give you all the glory, all the honor. You that made it possible, my Lord and my Father, for us to see another glorious day. You that gave us life, my Lord and my Father, without price. Father, Lord, you that made us to wake up with vitality and strength. A lot, my Lord and my Father, went to sleep as we did. Today, many are lying lifeless, my Lord and my Father. Father, Lord, but it pleases you, my Lord and my Father. That the Lord for us to be alive this hour, my Lord, my Father. The Bible says, let the living praise the Lord. That is why we have come to praise to worship you, to adore you, my Lord, my Father. Lord Jesus, we say, let your name continually be glorified and magnified in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Of the King of all glory. Lord Jesus, by your grace and mercy, we have come before your mighty presence. Lord Jesus, to be able to hear from you, my Lord, my Father, to start the day with you. Lord Jesus, as your children have come before thee. Now the Lord, the hour has come once again, my Lord, my Father, for you to speak to us, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, I am only a vessel in your hand, Lord Jesus. I have no word of my own. I have no wisdom of my own, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, I don't want to do that, my Lord, my Father. I step back that you step forward, my Lord, my Father. Now the Lord, as I yield myself unto you, O Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, speak your word to me, my Lord, my Father, to your children, my Lord, my Father. Now the Lord, as many, my Lord, my Father, that have come, Lord Jesus, before thee, that's the hour. Father, Lord, none shall go empty from thy presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, that word of encouragement, my Lord, my Father, that word of rebuke, that word, my Lord, my Father, that will bring us, my Lord, my Father, out of that wide road that leads to destruction, into that narrow path. Father, speak that word into our life this hour, my Lord, my Father. Father, Lord, that at the end, O Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, your name shall continue to be Father, magnified. Father, Lord, every power, my Lord, my Father, by the law of the enemy, Lord Jesus, every spirit that has been released this hour, Lord Jesus, Father, Lord, to cause distraction, my Lord, my Father, from your people, Lord Jesus, to bring absent mindedness, my Lord, my Father, that Lord, every spirit of buying and selling, my Lord, my Father, that the Lord will cast them away this hour in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, take over. Come and do that which only we do, and let the name of Almighty God continue to be glorified and magnified. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Please, Master Jesus Christ. Children of God, this morning, um, in the little word of exhortation that we have this morning, uh, each time we come to the mountain here, most of the things that we hear does not mean we have had it before. It is to encourage us. It is to do what to encourage us, it is to let us know that as the word of God is new every day, the same way Satan brings new schemes, new devices hmm. to be able to do what? To derail, to be able to do what? To destroy the children of God from the race that we are into. That is why the word of God is new every day. The Bible says, oh, uh, we the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It is a compass of our life. Mm -hmm. If a sinner misses his, uh, his navigator, eventually he may crash. If a pilot could not be able to be able to control his compass, there is danger ahead. As a child of God, the word of God is our compass. That is why it is imperative that we should make it a uh, uh, Closest to us, the Bible says, right at the tablet of your heart. Do not depart from it. Whatever thing we do, the word of God has to be our director if we are to make it to his kingdom on the last day. So please go with me to the book of Romans. All right, please, before we go to Romans, go, uh, let's open to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Book of Ephesians chapter 6, adding from verse 10 to 11. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 11. I read. He said, Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 11. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Thirteen, wherefore take unto you the whole armor that ye may be able to stand in the evil day. I'm having done all to stand. Fourteen, stand therefore, having your loins guide about with truth. I'm having on the bracelet of righteousness. Fifteen, and your feet should with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Sixteen, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Seventeen, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is why the topic of our discussion this morning, by his grace, we caption it standing firm on the word of God. Standing firm on the word of God. Brethren, the world we are living in right now. At this end time, if we cannot be able to grasp how the book of Ephesians encourages us to be able to do what? To guide ourselves, to dress like a soldier going to the war front. To guide our lives, to get prepared in this Christian race. If we miss all these things, Satan is very cunning. Satan is very, very swift. Satan has every apparatus to, de to deceive. Even that one that said, I have been in the law for 15 years. I have been the preacher of the gospel. Satan has what it takes to be able to deceive. Unless if we can be able to do what the book of Ephesians is saying, as a Christian, as somebody who is in the war front, we have to put on the whole armor of God. Beloved, it is very vital for our survival in this Christian race to mm. understand vividly that the moment that me and you, the moment we decided to denounce Satan, the moment we decided to separate ourselves, mm. the moment we decided to live our own ways of life, the moment we decided to come out from iniquity, from anything sinful, and to be able to embrace holiness and righteousness. The day that we say today, I have accepted our Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. As from today, I am on the Lord's side. That day, beloved, a battle line has been drawn. From that moment, a battle line has been drawn. A battle line that if we fail to do what the book of Ephesians is saying, one can be a casualty. A battle line has been drawn. And those that have decided that truly, in the spirit and in truth, to be on the Lord's side, we have been drafted into the God's army. We have been drafted into God's army. That is why the book of Ephesians addresses us here like people who are going to war front. We have been, we do it, we have been drafted into God's army. Brethren, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, we are engaged in a battle with an unseen spiritual enemy that seems to destroy and hinder us from making it. We are engaged with the spiritual forces that all their plan and purposes is to hinder us from making it to the kingdom of God on the last day. Satan is looking for every slightest accusation. Satan is looking for every slightest accusation to accuse you, to accuse me before God. Every slightest. And look at the way what he did in the book of Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah, without knowing that God has already reconciled his child, Joshua, with him, he has forgiven him. Yet Satan is still keeping record. 
That is small thing. That is why we never need pray. Every little, little foxes, those things that we think that it does not matter, but it matters. Little, little as they may be, but they are capable of destroying a whole vine. Those little, little things, Satan is looking for it to get hold of. So on that last day, he said, no, 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 this one is not able. God, this one is not, he can't enter. Look at, look at, look at what he did. If we do not stand firm on the word of God, checkmate ourselves with what God says, Satan is very crafty. Look at the way he stood to make sure that Joshua did not make it, if not because of the intervention, if not because of the favor, if not because of the grace of God upon Joshua's life. In the book of Zechariah chapter 3, I read from verse 1 to 4, book of Zechariah chapter 3, he said, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand not out of the fire? Verse 3, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and stood before the angel. For, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garment for him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused an iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of what of remnant. Satan did not know that God had already reconciled Joshua to himself. You can imagine what could have happened to Joshua. He could have started thinking that I am I am a priest of most high God. I am making it only for him to be disappointed. That is exactly what Satan is doing in the life of every Christian. So standing firm, getting our lives guided in the world of truth every day, any moment, is one of the things that we can do, we can use to outsmart Satan. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Brethren, in any situation that we are facing, in any challenges, we need to stand firm with the soul of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Otherwise, trial will surely come. When trial come, you may think that something is going wrong. You may think, oh, that man is not hearing from God again. Apostle is like he's not hearing from God again. You might start to accuse God. Many people have accused God wrongly, irrespective of what God has done. If children of God, if children of Israel can accuse Moses and Aaron, this year God, I don't know what he's doing. If after everything that God has done, if after all the miracles that God has performed before their naked eyes, to be able to free them from the age-long captivity they have been into, if after that, they can still accuse God. That is why, because they could not hold faith to the promise of Almighty God. They could not stand on that word, on that word of truth, on that sort of the spirit, knowing fully well that what God has said from the beginning, nothing can make him change, only if we can stand firm. The problem that humanity have today, especially Christians, we can listen. We can go to church, we can pray and do all things, but we find it difficult to stand firm on that word of God. The children of Israel could not be able to stand. And their murmuring, their complaint, their accusation, even met Moses not to enter into the promised land that he had labored for them. Because of the slightest challenges that they encountered in the desert of sin, they complained bitterly. In the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 20, I read from verse 1. He said, Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of sin, the first month, and the people are born in Kadesh, and Miriam died there, and was buried there too. And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses, against Aaron, too. And the people tried with Moses and spake, saying, 
we would go that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Four, and why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle died there? Five, and where have ye met us to come out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. You can see the extent of the complaint. Why? Because they lack to stand firm on the promise of Almighty God. The God that delivered, the God that have done miracles that have never ever happened in the history of mankind to be able to get them out of the grip of what of Pharaoh. Because of lack of standing on the promise of Almighty God, standing firm in the spirit of challenges, that is the problem that humanity has today. That, that is what is pushing people to run from one pastor to another, from one native doctor to another, from one occultic section to another. Because we cannot believe that he that promised is able to fulfill. I pray God will have mercy upon his children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Many Christians we have accused God wrongly, even men of God inclusive, because they may think, because I am doing the work of God, there is not supposed to be any conflict. I should not have any personal attack, no criticism, no slander. But they are wrong. When some situation arises in their personal life, or maybe in their family, or in their churches, what do they do? They will begin to run for help where there is no help. Before you know it, you see yourself visiting occultic uh, in the places, visiting spiritual or uh, occultic uh, houses in the name that you are looking for for help. Even though you are speaking the word, but you cannot stand firm on the word. Yes, Master Jesus Christ. Um. Uh, Such people. Such Christians who could not be able to face challenges, who could not be able to stand when trial come, they seem to forget that though Jesus Christ promises us abundant life, he said that he was at the same time sending us out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Even though he promised us what abundant life, he made us understand. I am sending you out of as a sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, you need to do what? You need to be clever. You need to be you need, you need to be you need to be clever like what a servant and be harmless like what a doves. They are promised of what abundant life, but at the same time, he's making us to stand on the faith on the word of God because challenges will come. In even in the midst of that what of that uh, uh, Abundant peace that they have promised us. That's in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16. I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. But you need to do what? You need to do you need to be, be clever as a serpent. You need to be harmless as a dove. He promised us peace. But in the same time, again, he said there will be what tribulation. That's in the book of John 16, 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. He promised our peace. At the same time, he made us know that is why the word of God never keeps us in darkness. As my brother normally says. He promised our peace. At the same time, he made us understand that in this world, there will be tribulation. John 16, 33. He said, this case has spoken unto you. I paraphrase. Be firm. Stand firm on the word of God. This day I promise, I spoke, I spoke unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. As a child of God, if we are focused, if we know where we are going, we should have all these things. It is only a baby Christian that thinks. That because I have given my life to Jesus, there is not going to be any trial. There's not going to be any test. There's not going to be any challenges. 
And that is why many churches use it to deceive people. When you are not being told the truth, when he begins to help, he said, No, it's like God is not here. I better just go to another place where there will be no challenges, where there will be no trial. Jesus Christ did not promise us so. He said, In me, you have peace. But in this world that you are seeing, there will be tribulation. But you do have love of good cheer. We need to have to guide our minds with all this word of truth if we are to make it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, again, in the ancient book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, Jesus said, We will be hated by everyone because of him. Matthew 10, 22. We will be hated by everyone because of him. But why anyone that stands firm to the end, that one is the person that is to be saved. People will hate us because of our stand today. Because you have decided, I don't want to do that business that I've been doing before again. Because I know it is against the will of God. I don't want to. I don't want to drag the way I am dressing before because I know it's against the word of God. I don't want to do all those bad, bad things, all those illegal, all those sinful acts. By the time you detach yourself from it, people will hate you. People that you normally hang out with, people who profess to be your closest friend before, they will hate you. Family will hate you. We have seen testimony that even husband will hate you. But the Bible said that anyone that stands firm on the word of truth to the end, that is the one that will be saved. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Brethren, a genuine Christian life is nothing less than what? A warfare. A genuine Christian life is nothing, nothing less than a warfare against that ugly enemy that is Satan whom his ultimate goal is to steal and to destroy our salvation. That is what he's out to do. That is why our life is a warfare every day. And that is why we absolutely imperative that we must always stand firm in the word of of God. In that sort of spirit, whatever thing we do, wherever thing we go, anything we do at all, we let the word of God to be a compass our director. Why? Because we realize that our life is a warfare. Satan is looking for every slightest mistake. I pray God will continually encourage and settle us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, he said, For a great door and a virtue is open unto me. That's a possible saying. He said, for a great door and a factory is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. In the midst of open doors, in the midst of you know, opportunities, there are adversaries. Satan is there to oppose, unless we stand firm on the word of God. And what that, that, that means? It means that when God blesses a work, Satan is not happy. Enemy is what... It, 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 with him, he is annoyed, his anger, violent. Oh. He is there to do what he increase his attack. He's there to do what he increase his attack. Even in the ministry, when a ministry is effective, when a ministry is preaching and doing the real work of God in holiness in righteousness, like what we express on this mountain, the enemy will be doing over time. Satan will be doing over time work. And what is he trying to do? To see if he can be able to bring down, if he can be able to bring confusion. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Satan normally do all those things through internal problems, through clash of influence, through selfishness, and through what and through the temptation of moral failure in the church. These are the things, these are things that Satan blew when he sees that a, a ministry is effective, a ministry is attacking his kingdom. A ministry is what depopulating his, 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 uh, his population. That is exactly what Satan does. And that is why we need to stand firm. We need to stand firm in the word of God on this mountain as what as one indivisible family. As one indivisible family. 
22 love. We need to start from knowing fully well that Satan is always there. Whatever we experience, any kind of confusion, it is Satan. Because he knows he has been attacked. Because he knows his kingdom is, uh, is in danger. Mm -hmm. If we do not start from on the word of God, we will not be able to do what? To overcome him. That is why the book of uh, Ephesians is encouraging us. But whatever we do, that armor, that bracelet, bracelet of truth, we should guide in our lives. That is one of the things where we can use to do what to defeat Satan. And I pray, God Almighty, control and empower us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Standing firm on the word of God, to of God, with unshakable faith, is needed in this Christian race. Because we are bound to do what? To experience storms of life. Truth is need to be said. Unless you want to remain a what a very Christian, there is supposed to be a storm of life. If you are not going to your own, prepare for it. It will surely come. It will surely come. But if we guide ourselves, if we stand firm in the sword of the spirit, when it comes, you know, say yes, because I have been forewarned. You'll be able to know how to search what search through that very storm. And you come over to the other side as a victor. Storm of life must surely come. So there are some steps to be taken when such storm arises. When such storm arises, there are things to be done as a child of God. There are things we're supposed to do as a child of God. Some of them are seen in the book, in the book of Psalm. Psalm 71, when he comes, when you begin to see yourself, you know, facing some challenges or trial, what do you do? You ask a person. How do you ask? It is through the word of God. Express our need to God and ask him to intervene. That is what the psalmist says in the book of uh, Psalm 71. Psalm 71 verse 4. And you begin to say, deliver me, oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the righteous and cruel men. You go to him. When there is a storm, you don't run from pillar to pole. You don't go to meditative doctors. You don't go to take a holy water. You don't go to swim in, uh, in a barbecue in the midnight. But before you go, ask him. When the storm of, of life arises, number two, remember. Now you do that by reflecting on the ways that God has worked in your life and helped you in the time past. Be able to throw your mind back. If God has done something in the past, then you have for such a situation. This one is able to do that. That was what the children of Israel lacked when they begin to complain in the wilderness, forgetting what God has done before Pharaoh, before they can get able to get what to get their freedom. They were unable to reflect back. But the service is telling us in that Psalm, Psalm 71. In Psalm 71, if we go to what if we go to verse 5 and 6. What did the Bible say? He said, For thou art my hope. From verse 5, thou art my hope, O Lord. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's voice. My place shall continually be of thee. Remember in the past where you are coming from and where you are right now. If we cannot be able to do that through the word of God, Satan is very clever to sweep us out of our feet. What do you do again when the storm arises? In the midst of that storm, if you can model up the courage to be able to praise God, to be able to praise Him, to be able to glorify Him, the psalmist said the same thing in the bottom book of Psalm 71, verse 8. He said, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. We need to remember that God can do all things. We do not allow Satan to steal away that word of truth, that sort of spirit from us. If he does, calamity is raging around the corner. I pray God will save his children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, in every Christian life, there will be trials, there will be disappointments, there will be persecution and what and temptations. But in the midst of all this, we must stand firm in Christ. Not only must we stand firm to these things, but we must stand firm to the biblical truth. One thing is to stand firm, and that thing is to stand firm in what the word of God says. 
we must stand firm in what? In biblical truth. That is what can make us not to delay, not to give in, for Satan not to prevail over our life. Many people who profess to know Christ today, they are compromising with the world and are now twisting the scripture to suit their lifestyle. We thank God for this mountain. We thank God for matter of solution. We are the word of God comes every day wrong. Many a times it is not comfortable. Many a times it's like it's piercing. Like I personally say, it is always a painful pill. It is always a painful pill. But grateful if we can somehow that courage to be able to swallow that pill. Many churches today they try to twist it to be able to do what to gather their members. They try to twist it to be able to not do what because they are looking onto tight and offering. They are looking into the population of the congregation because they feel if we say it this way. By Sunday, we will not see anyone again. But we thank God Almighty for this mountain that God Almighty who has commissioned His Son. He said, Go, bring back my children with the word of truth. Because He knows that that word of truth might not be palatable to many people. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The devil will always try to tempt us, but we must put on the full armor of God. Beloved, our Christian life is an ongoing battle against sin. It is an ongoing battle against sin. We must always pray for courage and boldness to do the will of God at all times. We must always pray for that, to do the will of God at all times. It is dangerous. It is dangerous to drive and not to pay attention to what is in your front. As a driver, you are driving, but you are not conscious of what is in your front. It is very dangerous. We must keep our eyes in front of us unto Jesus and to avoid any side distractions. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12, 12 verse 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If we stand firm on the word of God, we look towards Jesus. He's our own mother. We, we do, when we look towards Jesus, what I do, we avoid every side distraction. Jesus Christ, the Bible said, he despised shame. He endured the cross, all those side distraction, because he's still looking at the goal. As an athlete, who is running, the, the strength is going. You are, you, are, you, are, you are trying to get the, the last thing you to be able to finish. What is pushing that up? Because he's looking at the other car. He's looking at that medal. That is the same way in the Christian race. If we stand firm in the word of God, in the spirit of challenges, in the spirit of trials, we keep on. We keep our focus because there is a crown waiting for me and you. Satan will not take it away from our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But the time will not permit us. Uh, many uh, the Bible uh, verse to, uh, to read, but I'll call some that in our private study we might be able to go to it. Psalm 93, verse 5, Psalm 93, verse 5, and Psalm 119, verse 89 to 91. The first one is Psalm 93, verse 5, second one, Psalm 119, verse 89 to, to 91. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. First Corinthians 15, 58, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, Philippians 4, 1 to 2, and finally, Galatians chapter 1, verse 5. Galatians chapter 1, verse 5. Brethren, time will not permit us. I pray, as little as the word may be, the Bible said the word of God is new every day. I pray the word of God that I heard this morning, by his grace, will find a fertile soil in our heart to germinate in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, are you out there? You are not born again. You have not given your life unto Jesus Christ. That is the reason why you cannot stand firm. That is the reason why you cannot trust the word of God that he can do all things. That is, there's no other reason. That is the reason. Because you have not given your life unto him. You have not given your life unto him. And the Bible said in the book of John 3, 3, very, very, I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he can never see the kingdom of God. So if you want, 
The word of God has come to you this hour. And you, are, you all want to open your mind. You want to give your life unto him. I want you to repeat this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you once again. Thank you once again. I count myself privileged to be able to hear your undiluted word this morning. I now realize how Satan have been making me weak not to trust you with all my heart, with all my mind. What I deserve to go to hell. But because you are a faithful and merciful father, I come back to you this morning. I come back to you this hour. Lord, accept me. Lock out my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. I surrender myself unto thee. Lord Jesus, accept me, my Lord, my father. Do not leave me. Do not forsake me. Today, I have confessed to be on your side. In the name of Jesus Christ. Brother, have you made a prayer? I want to tell you this hour that heaven is already rejoicing over you. And we in the family of Almighty God have welcomed you into the family of Almighty God, into this family that belongs to Almighty God. From now on, you begin to see the manifestation of God's power in your life. I pray with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, everlasting Father, immortal Holy Ghost, Father Lord, as many, oh Lord Jesus, that have had their word this hour, and have made up their mind, my Lord, my Father, that they Lord to surrender unto you, to leave that far country of sin, and to embrace you. Father Lord, may you, my Lord, my Father, embrace them in your bosom ancient of days, put them in the hole of your hand, that they will not go back to their Egypt. My Lord, my Father, ancient of the King of all glory, that the Lord is said, oh, there will be, oh, praise there will be joy in heaven for that single sinner that repents. Father Lord, this one that repented and come to you, Lord Jesus. Father Lord, may you go to the them, abide them, Lord Jesus, that at the end, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, that Lord will all rejoice in your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Amen. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have all prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Father, in the Holy Ghost, Father Lord, this is your word, my Lord, my Father, which has spoken to me, my Lord, my Father. Is there any way, my Lord, my Father, that has spoken out of context, Lord Jesus, my Lord, my Father? Lord, I ask for your mercy. Ancient of it, I am that I am. Lord, I pray that your word that has spoken this hour, my Lord, my Father, will not stand against me, neither against your children. Father, let your word, oh Lord Jesus, continually, my Lord, my Father, purify and sanctify us, Lord Jesus. Continually make us to be firm, my Lord, my Father, that will not be driven here and there, my Lord, my Father, that the wind of the doctrines of this world today will not be tossing off from here to there, my Lord, my Father. Let your word continually make us to be firm in you, Lord Jesus, that at the end, my Lord, my Father, we all, my Lord, my Father, assemble into your kingdom on the last day, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we all pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Over to you, man of God. God bless you, sir.